as storage for your, we call it sleepy stinky, for your. Uh oh, more storage. For the what? The sewer for, thingy? Yeah, your, oh. your sewer hose. Okay. Uh, you have two stabilizing jacks on the back. It is only to help stabilize it, not level it. Mm -hmm. So it'll only take away a little bit of the movement. We recommend you get wheel chocks for your wheels to kind of hold your wheels in place. Yeah. And for the front, we uh, offer or we suggest you get uh, wheel chocks. Little, they're little squares. Oh, I've bought those already. Yeah. All right. So they got like a little tool that you want it. Yeah, that'll be. I'll show you. It's in your front compartment. Um, you can also use a drill. It's easier. It oh, might go down faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where you will be doing your dumping for your gray tank. This is your city onboard water tank, and then this is your black tank. You always want to make sure that your black tank, well, both tanks are closed in use. And when you uh, go to drain them, I would do your black tank first. Dump that, pull the lever, and then I would do your gray tank to kind of help cleaning, cleaning out. Yep. So the tank is closed, I'll be open. Yep. Yep. And uh, I recommend when you are flushing your black tank, you want to make sure that that is in an open position. So that way, when you're flushing it, it's not bringing it back up into the unit. It's got somewhere to go. Okay, so yeah. when somebody's using the actual toilet, you want to make sure this is open. You want to make sure it's closed. Oh, it's closed. Yep. Toilet, yeah, yeah in use, you want to make sure it's closed. When you're flushing it, you want to open it. Yeah, you, that's when you would open it. The only time you're opening it is if you're flushing it or flushing dumping it. Flushing out the whole trailer, but not flushing the actual toilet. No. Okay, that's yep. perfect. Okay. If you don't, then it'll be poop all on the ground. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we recommend that you dump it when it gets to about two thirds, not full, so that way it's not getting in there, clumping up and hardening up when and causing it, any problems. How do we know how full it is? I'll show you on the inside when, oh, we, okay. when we first go get in. There's a little um, panel. It'll show oh, all okay. operations. Yep. So this is your 30 amp service cord. This is your cord too. Okay. Um, we recommend that you get a surge protector so that way all your appliances are protected if you're at your campground and a power outage goes through all your um, right. appliances. The surge protector would plug into there and then the, that goes... The surge protector will plug into uh, the source of power so it'll plug into there it'll be about it'll be a box and then you plug it into that and then it into the stream or the door. okay so you'd want to look up a 30 amp rv surge protector yeah we have some next door if you want to look into them next door okay. or give you an, a little bit of an idea of prices okay so the surge protector from the rv you won't need a surge protector inside the unit okay no. cool nope it'll just be with your cord. okay cool yeah all right that is the uh exit to your ac unit with your uh your roof i recommend you walk it every 90 days so what you're going to look for when you're on the roof is you're going to look around the seals, around the AC, or not the AC, or yeah, the AC vents or any vents up top. You're, you're going to feel for the uh, seals. If the seals are any harder than the palm of your hand, you want to get them replaced because that can lead it to start cracking and water will get, can get inside your unit. So we recommend you walk it and just make sure. Get on the roof good. and walk around so on the roof. So the seals got to yeah. be soft rubber. I deal with a lot of seals. They're turning to plastic and hard and then they won't. Yeah. You actually get up there and walk on the roof. No, you don't walk on there. You, you can just, walk you up can there. Walk on yeah, there. it's safe. But it's just safe. kneel on there, you know. Get a blanket well, though, you might burn yourself. <laughs> so, in this too, yeah. condense the cleaner sometimes. Clean it, and when you spray it, just don't mess these up. Just spray and you'll get a stay cool. Right here is your freshwater connection. This is your onboard water tank. This really, you only need to fill if you're doing any like boondocking where you have no access to city water. Yeah. Or even in travel purposes, if you guys don't want to go and stop at a truck stop or something for the bathroom, you can always come in your RV and you'll have your water in there and you can use your toilet. Okay. How many gallons that hold again? Oh, no. mm, I'm not sure on hand, but... And this is just straight flow water right here. Use that you want, much you want. Yeah, that's where you will um, hook up when you're at a campground. You'll hook your freshwater hose to that. Okay. Uh, we recommend you get a water pressure regulator. Um, okay. It's a little, it's a metal, um, I don't know how to explain it. Basically, it twists into the, the hose and then into here, and it just helps uh, with the water pressure with that's the going PSI. on the inside. Okay. Yeah. Because it might bust sills and stuff if it's too high pressure. Right, right. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want to say it's a 50 pound. Seven pounds a gallon. 
so 50 pounds. And we only use the freshwater one if we want to go boondocking or if we just, this one you'd use it when they have all the connections. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we recommend you usually keep it empty so that way it's not making Sludging, any moisture yeah. or making any mildew in there. Okay. okay. Here is your 10 gallon propane tank. It is filled at this time. And then you have your 12 volt battery it is a low maintenance battery so i would say every 90 days i would check it um to top it off with distilled water if it's needed so and every then 90 heard, days is the battery and the roof seals okay yep i have i'll show you um there's a little maintenance guide in here okay. it'll show you right, right here um is for a solar panel so if you wanted to add like a portable solar panel that's just to charge the battery like mike was explaining okay What's this light right here for? I see it's a portable solar. This is yeah, that that would be the connections um, okay. with your. Uh, well, I guess the light will come on when you hook it up. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then this is would be your manual crank or your jack, front jack. And these wires just stay out like this. Yeah. yeah. And well, this, this one will connect to your truck. These two. But these ones we don't got to worry about mice or rodents now. Uh, Do those? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Get a nice shock. Right. <laughs> so this is your storage compartment. This is the crank that we were talking about okay, for the jacks yeah. in the back. Okay. You have your one pen outlet here on the outside. If this was to ever lose power or any of the outlets in your unit, they all piggyback off each other. You have a GFI finder. It should be in your bathroom. I'll point it out. Uh -huh. You just hit go there, reset it, and that, you recommend a surge protector for that one too? Uh, no, as long as your your uh, main, main plug-in has the surge right. protector, you're you're covered. I wish you were able to show us how the awning works. I know, I, I could show you a little bit, but... Maybe when we move it's it? It's automatic? Yeah. Um, so, I'll show you. When you push the button, it, it's, it'll go as long as your finger's on the button. As soon as you let go, it'll stop. What oh, advice no. you paid for? He said he was putting them in the folder. In the folder? In my folder, so I'm just gonna ask them to put them on when they do everything else. Yeah, I can't. I ain't, I ain't <laughs> so this is your water tank, water heater. I'm sorry. Uh huh. Okay. Down here, yeah, I'll take it all the way off. Do you see this? This is a, what we call a zinc rod. Uh -huh. That will take any corrosion or any damage for the water tank. So I recommend you check that once a year. Um, if it's rusted or corroded on the inside, um, we recommend you change it out. Okay, so it should be when you take it out, it should be like silver on the inside, it should be clean. Yeah, it should be clean. That's one, it's a brand new one, so right. you should be good for the next year. And what's this push to reset stuff right here? So that, if it ever uh, doesn't start, start up, mm -hmm. this is where you'd go to reset it. Um, okay. I'll show you on the inside um, right. what you'll see if it doesn't start. Right. That's basically, you don't have no hot water, come out here and reset it. Yep. Okay. You're supposed to put a lock on there, right? Oh no. No, it's just lock it up. Yep. Okay. We make our way on the inside. 